Hey everyone, happy March. It is actually March 6th to be exact. I wanted to give you guys a quick mortgage rate update. There's a lot that's been going on since the start of February. And if you're tuning in for the first time, what you are looking at might look like a string of Christmas lights, but this is how I monitor the mortgage interest rate market. Mortgage rates move as the price of mortgage bonds move. And so investors, everyday investors, people like you and me, we can invest our money in things like the stock market and the S&P 500. We can invest our money in treasury bonds, or we can invest our money in things called mortgage bonds. And mortgage bonds and treasury bonds tend to be a safer bet. The rate of return that we get on those investments is typically lower than investing in like the stock market. And so investors will buy mortgage-backed securities for several reasons. But the reason why we're monitoring the bond market is because that is actually what causes mortgage rates themselves to go up and down. So when the demand for mortgage bonds is high, or when we see this line on the chart go up, it means the price of bonds are going up, there's a high demand for mortgage bonds, then interest rates themselves are going down. So it's kind of deceiving because you're like, well, Denise, you're giving me a rate update. The line is going up. Doesn't that mean interest rates are going up? No, there's an inverse relationship between mortgage bonds and mortgage rates. So I want to do something real quick. I want to zoom out over a two year time period. And I want to show you that if I come all the way over here to the left and we're measuring the price of these mortgage bonds, you'll see that this black box pops up, which shows us March of 2022. This is a two year look back. And what I want to show you is that from a macro perspective, we can see the line trending down. And then we recover a little bit at the end of 2022. And then basically in the mid of last year, we see the line go down until it hits this bottom point on October 26th of last year. Again, when the line is going down, it means the demand for bonds is going down. Investors are buying things like maybe more stocks in the stock market. And so interest rates are going up. And that's the narrative we've heard for the last two years, right? Is interest rates have been going up. A lot of times we think that it's because there's news on social media or on the news channels that the feds are increasing the federal funds rate. And that's why rates are going up. That's not actually the case. And we'll get into that in a, in a little bit, but the demand for mortgage bonds went down. So interest rates went up. In fact, interest rates hit their highest point in October of last year. And then look, we saw a decent recovery until about February of this year. And I want to explain what happened there. So if I zoom in and I do a three month look back now, you see here that we have this big, long green candlestick. And by the way, what that means are th these are called candlesticks. Every single day, interest rates move. If you didn't know that, and maybe you're pre-qualified right now, maybe you got pre-qualified a year ago and you're just kind of passively monitoring rates. Here's the single most important thing for you to know. Your interest rate is not locked in until you have a seller that's accepted a contract you have an address and you have a close date. So any rate that maybe a lender showed you a year ago or even last month or even yesterday is just an estimated rate for the pre-qualification. It is not a rate quote. It's the same thing when you see rates online. It's not a rate quote. It's just an average of what rates are from coast to coast with average credentials like down payment and FICO score. And it's just a snapshot. There's no way that you can get a rate quote a true rate quote until the lender knows about 30 things and you have a closed date and a property address because it is specific to where you're buying type of home, all that kind of stuff. But this shows you that interest rates not only move every single day. That's why there's a little bit of red and a little bit of green, but some of these candlesticks are longer on certain days. And what that means is the movement on that particular day moved more than maybe on these little days here. So what the heck is going on? Well, in December of last year, December 13th, you guys might remember the feds had a meeting and they said, you know what? We think we have inflation under control. We feel like we no longer need to increase that federal funds rate. So the federal funds rate is the rate that the banks pay one another. And what the feds do is they increase the federal funds rate when they want to control inflation. How? Well, 
they increase it to make our credit card rates higher, our car loans higher, our business line of credits higher. When those things are more expensive, ideally consumer spending comes down and it's their way of trying to get control of inflation. Doesn't matter what political party you're part of, it's a known thing that they've done for years. So what they said on December 13th is they said, you know what, we've increased the federal funds rate enough this year we think we have inflation under control so all they said was that they not only have it under control but they might have overdone it and so next year we think we might have to lower the federal funds rate because we think we overdid it and because they just made that announcement of we think we overdid it so we are likely going to lower it made investors run to the market and buy a bunch of mortgage bonds because they were predicting that the inflation numbers and so forth were overdone. That's what happened. And so because of that news hit, it wasn't because they did anything with the federal funds rate. They just made the announcement. And just like any of us, if we heard that Nike stock tomorrow was going to go up by X amount, we would all run and go buy Nike stock, right? Well, that's basically what investors did with the bonds, except for if you see here two, in the start of February, really it started here and then here. Um, February, the uh, it was the inflation numbers that came out first. So here's when we start to see the downward slope. And what happened was inflation numbers came out here and then the jobs report came out on the 13th. And guess what? Both of those reports were better than what we were expecting. Meaning unemployment numbers were down, inflation was down, and so what that told bond investors was, uh-oh, we thought the Nike stock was going to go up. We thought that the feds were going to lower the federal funds rate because they overdid it. But these two economic indicators make it seem like our economy is okay. And so it's very unlikely when the feds meet this month that they're going to lower the federal funds rate because they might not have overdone it. They might have hit the nail on the head and now we have some stability. And so that's why we saw some investors selling their mortgage bonds. The demand went down. And when, again, when we see this line go down, interest rates go up. And so we saw interest rates get back over 7% on an average, not a rate quote, but on average, we saw it go back over 7% and people were like, what the heck is going on? Now we have seen some really good stability since that announcement. And then we've seen a little bit of increase here, which means interest rates came back down. I'm gonna show you where we're at now. So you'll see this, by the way, every single week we post on our website under mortgage rates, a snapshot of what's going on. So last Thursday, the average, not a rate quote, but the average rates were around 7.125. Um, I always will post a video market update here, and then I've got a pretty cool principal and interest payment calculator here, always on my website, some more information. But if we were to pull up interest rates right now today, that small movement in rates caused the 30-year average to go still just over 7.03. This is where we are as of 9.36 a.m. on March 6th. So if you're watching this video and it's March 10th, it might look a little different. But again, this is the average 30-year, 15-year FHA jumbo. Average just means average loan amount, average FICO, average down payment. Um, in fact, you can see here that this was based on a $250,000 loan amount, probably 800 FICO score. If you actually scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that there's three different rate quotes. You can't trust an online rate quote. An online rate quote is an advertisement. Y'all have heard me say that before. Um, but I wanted you guys to see that this little bit of movement basically took us from a 7.15 to just over 7%. And so what I'm sharing with you is that we are predicting, even though this is a roller coaster, over the course of 2024, we are predicting kind of like what we saw in these two years. You know, it, this is trending down, but we had some peaks and valleys, right? What we're predicting is this year is that the trend is going to be that this line's going to be going up. It's just going to have a little bit of a roller coaster. What does this mean for you if you're a buyer and you've been sitting on the sidelines? Well, what I can tell you is that when interest rates, when we saw this improvement right here from October to January, holy smokes, 
Everybody that was on the sidelines last year, 72% of buyers paused their home buying, waiting for rates to come down. There is pent up demand. We simply don't have enough supply. We haven't had enough supply since 2017. So when, when rates got below 7%, mortgage applications and buyers re-entering the market went through the roof and we're back to seeing multiple offers on homes. Then we had the news come out and rates got back over 7% and people put the brakes on. So what does this mean for you? This is the single greatest opportunity to re-enter the market. We need to refresh your pre-approval, see what your buying power is today. And if there's anything I can stress to you, it's that the price is permanent. The interest rate is temporary. If you can get in at a home price today, let's say at 500,000 and the rate is 7% and you're like, Denise, I hate that rate. I get it. But a year from now and potentially two years from now, you could make a 10% return. Y'all that's $50,000 that you would make because you bought this home before demand shot through the roof for real estate again, just like we saw in 2020. And I want to help you own that home before it goes up. It's like buying that stock. I want to help you buy that Nike stock when it's at hundred dollars a share so that when it's at $150 a share, you absorb all that profit and all that equity, but you got to do it before everybody else does it. When rates are down, even if that means buying the ugly house, if you're renting right now, like the money that you're spending in rent, you're throwing it away. You will make money on real estate. People are 45 times more have a higher net worth by owning than by renting. So buy the ugly house, buy the house. That's too small, live in it for a year or two and make a good money and use it as a stepping stone to buy your next house. If you currently own a home and you're like, I don't know if now's the time to sell mine and buy. The thing is, is it's very tough to ever sell high and buy low, not in the same market. Cause if you're selling high, you're going to turn around and you're going to buy high at the end of the day, it's about to get super competitive, possibly back in that 2020 market where the only way that you're going to be able to get an offer selected is if you offer over list price, waive all your inspections, that is potentially all the data is showing us that this pent up demand, that's where we're headed. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines, if you have friends or family, or anybody that's been sitting on the sidelines, we are licensed nationwide. I'd love to have a discovery call with them. Let's reanalyze your numbers. And if you're self-employed and you haven't filed your taxes, it's more important than ever that you talk to us before you file those taxes. So I hope you found this helpful. Give it a like, share, comment, share it with whoever you want. My whole thing is knowledge is power. And I want to equip you with as much information, data and facts. Y'all know data over drama, don't listen to the storylines and the news. Follow your nerd. I'll give you the real deal. Thanks guys.